This is an intro kind of on top of my next intro. This will be the end result that we come up with. We're going to go through the specific add-on Archimesh and we're going to get some results with it. I'm going to show you how to use it to create a room and we're going to check out the lighting and different things. We'll put a black body intensity on at the end to get a little more realistic look on the lighting and this will kind of cover the basics on how to generate a procedural non-destructive room and put some light in it. Let's go. All right, this is going to be a more in-depth tutorial on the Archimesh. Okay, so I did a short um, just showing a basic cube and then snapping a panel window in and cutting it out with a boolean. It was very rudimentary, but it was just meant to be a quick example because you really can't do a lot in shorts. So here we go. If you hide this, the window object you'll be able to actually see is scaling uh, using a special feature, which is an automatic hole cutter designed for a selected object on the Archimesh. And so it's pretty cool. So we're going to start a fresh copy of Blender to go over this and we'll just design a room and we'll make it custom. You can do this any way you want or you can follow along exactly. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, type in Arc. You'll get the Archimesh. There's a little bit of online documentation if you want to go over that. Press N on the end panel and we're going to go to create and then Archimesh. And just to kind of start this off, we'll just start up at the top here and we'll type in room and you're going to instantly get a wall panel. And the wall panel is going to be procedural, non-destructive. So what you can do is you can add a number of walls to this and I'm just going to add four walls for now. And you can take up a top view if this makes sense to you. And down here at the bottom, there's going to be a tool tips for measurements, names. So you can turn that on if you want, or you can turn it off. Now over in the item tab, take a look at the dimensions of this. And we'll see that the height is 2.4 meters. If by chance you switch this to Imperial, because that's what you need. That is 7.87 feet, which is about the average height of a wall. So it comes in like it should. Now going back over to the Create tab, we have an option to put a floor in, put in a ceiling, and close the walls. For now, I'm not going to put a ceiling, but I will put a floor in. I will not close the walls just yet until I actually get this kind of lined up. Now we'll have controls for each one of these walls, one through four. Um, the length of the walls can be changed. But if you click advanced, you will also get an angle and the angle can be curved. And so now you can add a different look to the room and each one of these can be ticked on if you want the option. So I'll go to wall two and you can see you kind of play with the length just a little bit and wall three and make this like maybe a longer hallway and then wall four can be brought out to a greater distance, whatever you want. And architecturally speaking, I do not have uh, architectural training. I'm just going to go over the functionality. So I'm sure some other things will kick in for you guys. And if there are any things that I miss, I do apologize for that. But I'm not an architect. I'm just a troubleshooter type because um, I work in the HVAC field predominantly, working with heat load calculations, thermodynamics and the overall functionality of air conditioning systems in uh, commercial buildings. So I do have some knowledge of it, but it's more about running the ductwork for me. So let's jump into this. And like I said, you can just kind of play around with these. If you want this to be curved, you can. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and close the wall at this point. So now I've got an enclosure and I'll be able to change all right, I'm going to remove the curve from wall one and I'm going to straighten this out. It's all kind of working off of the world origin. So I want to bring the angle back to negative 90 and just kind of straighten that out. This is a quick adjustment. I just want to add a little bit of video here 
in the middle of the tutorial before I post this. So if by chance you wanted this to be flat along the line here, you're able to do that by grabbing it, whatever wall you made. But for me, wall three, if I bring that to zero, I can snap that over and then I could actually uh, remove the curve here or extend that out and do a bunch of different things. But just to give you guys an idea, I'm leaving the room shaped like this, you know, because it's just what I want right now. And this is good enough for the example. So let's go ahead and throw a window in here. And it doesn't really matter where you go. I'm just going to throw a window in here. And I want to grab a face and shift S. And I want to bring the cursor to selected. And now you can move this around anywhere you want later. Now that cursor is there. It's going to pend in where I want it. So I'm going to grab a panel window and snap it in. And I'll just grab the empty, scale it down just a little bit. And in order for this to work, I'm going to actually need some thickness on the wall. So over here, I want to just increase the thickness a touch. Something like that is good. And I'll collapse that back. Now I can grab the window with this selected. And I want to click only selected and auto hole. Okay, and so now at this point, I'm going to have the ability to move this around with a boolean that is updating automatically so your measurements will be very precise and more exact and if i take the window and hide it and grab the empty you can see this kind of what's controlling it and that's how it's going to move around so now if this was going to be a say very large window i could grab that empty scale it out on the x G and X and kind of move that over and then with all those tool tips on I've now got all of the exact measurements like I want and so that will kind of give you an idea of how to function and go through you know just putting in different objects cutting in holes and using the add-on as intended now from here I'm just going to take the window and line it up just a little bit better I'll take up this top view and I'm on the Y axis, so wherever you ended up, it's going to scale this on the Y a little bit, and move it in. Come back out, G and Y, and whatever area you're actually going to have the camera in is much more important. So just have that kind of lined up nice like that looks kind of good. Maybe it's not flawless out here, but that looks pretty good too. Now, as far as dropping in assets and things like that, um, I wouldn't use this. I, I use Blender Kit a lot, so if you guys haven't used this, then you can grab models, materials, scenes, itch your eyes, brushes, all kinds of stuff. And you do have the option in here to click on free first. So I'll just type in kitchen, and I don't want to model out a kitchen. It's kind of ridiculous. So maybe I just want something um, to throw in. And maybe I want to throw it in like right about here. And I can play with it once it comes in. Now I just want to rotate this and let's see, 90 degrees or so. Looks kind of good. Take up a um, top view, move that around just a touch. Doesn't have to be too amazing, but this is just a quick overview to give you guys a little bit of a heads up on how to use that room generator. Let's throw an area light in here and we can turn that power up just a touch. And I want to be on cycles, not EV. And this does come with some materials. So if you were to select down here near the bottom, let's grab this wall. Uh, all the way down here, you'll see create default cycles materials. So it will actually have some materials for you to work with. So that will be a little bit easier for you. I'm going to go kind of old school here. And what we can do is throw a sun lamp in. And I'm just going to point it towards the window. In fact, I don't actually want to do that. I like using the world properties color and the sky texture just for some uh, basic prototyping, if you will. And create a save point because sometimes the sky texture was a little crashy before 
and we can throw a ceiling on this now. So I'll go ahead and throw a ceiling in and then we'll set up a little camera right here. That way I can just have a nice view of the room and I can snap in here. Looks pretty good. That's about eye level. And now I'm going to go back out and let's see, pull up the world properties here. And I'm using the niche to just what it comes with. I like the elevation somewhere around seven and I'll snap back in here and we'll have a better view of what's going on. I want to bring that area light back down because it's kind of not where I want it. That looks pretty good. Make sure I'm on GPU compute and something like 50 samples, it's fine. So back over here at the world, we will rotate this until that light is coming in directly into the window. That looks kind of nice. And so now we get this view and maybe rotate it back just a touch, kind of like that. And that's why I use the elevation at about seven, just kind of bring it down just so you can throw stuff in there now from here if you wanted to you could um, go ahead and play with the exposure i'm not going to really get into lighting and all that stuff uh, but you can play around with the exposure just a touch and make this look really nice and then render that out so that is one way of putting light through a window which doesn't look too shabby and then of course you know you're playing with the exposure not necessarily with the world property strength um, you can do that if you want. And if I wanted to just enhance this a touch more for realism, I could go down and let's pull up the shader editor, go from object to world. And for this sky texture here, maybe we actually drop this down into the strength. That's kind of neat. Now you've got this funkiness, but what we're going to do is we're going to fix that. So let's type in black for black body, and we will connect this to the color. Now <clears throat> you're gonna get the real realistic world stuff here. Let's see if I have Light Magic Studio installed. I don't. Let's install that real quick. It'll be worth it, I promise. So I'm going to look for LM Studio 7. If you guys don't have this add-on, it does animated gobos and a bunch of really cool stuff. Give it a second. It's a big add-on may take three or four seconds to load. There's quite a bit going on. So now in LM Studio 7, we can drop down the select lighting area here. And if I hit recycle, you'll see now the sunset. Okay, this is the black body intensity spectrum. It goes from a match flame to street light, to sunset, to fluorescent, midday. And these are all uh, rated. If you look at the the tooltip that pops up, this is 4,000K. This one is 5,500, and I didn't make this chart. I just inputted this and made it make sense in the add-on. 6,000, cloudy day, 7,500, clear sky is 10,000. I use that one a lot. And I do have preset studios in here, gobos, animated gobos, and a ton of other stuff. So you could uh, check that out. There's quite a few things, you know, for... Uh, projecting things into lights, which is pretty cool. So I don't even have to have the, the window there. I could completely fake it uh, with uh, Light Magic Studio. So it's just one of those things. So we'll put 10,000 in here. And when I put in 10,000, woohoo, look at that. You got a clear sky. It's a black body intensity. Looks a lot more realistic. I really like the result. I know there's a bunch of guys could do better, but uh, I'm better at designing ductwork heat load calculations for big buildings and homes but not too shabby i hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial um you know i did it that rudimentary very quick kind of a um just a generic like just to give beginners the idea for that one short with the cube in the window but hey you know whatever i hope this helps everybody out see you guys i got 30 percent off all of my add-ons right now too so if you go over to Blender Market and check this out, I've got one click proxy. This is a really cool thing. It iterates through every object in the scene and gives you a proxy instance for each one. It also has a batch decimate. So you can do it with the decimate modifier as well with controls.
then for the hard surface toolbox and mirror machine if you haven't seen that thing in action it's actually pretty powerful for a hard surface modeling program and then here's light magic studio and then there's some other things you can kind of play around with there's a free beginners tutorial it's old it's pretty old it's from like 3.1 but it's just teaching the interface that's all it's teaching so it's still very relevant all right that's it see you guys in the next one